Hi, my name is Paul and welcome to The Learning Net. In this video we're going to talk about the Reuters boot process. Um, Cisco love asking questions in the exam about the boot process. Uh, so obviously it's important that you, you, you know the theory side of things, but more importantly you should also know the practical side of things because as a network engineer you need to understand how your system files get moved around, how you copy them, how you edit them, how you recover them, uh, particularly when you have a, a corrupt IOS or when you've lost your usernames and passwords. Uh, you have to fully understand the boot process in order to manipulate it to accomplish whatever goal you're trying to achieve. Okay, so in this one slide here, I'm just going to show you the whole process as it is from start to finish, and then we'll go through one or two other slides where we'll show you the actual step-by-step -step process. Uh, what I've got in red on this slide are the main uh, memory components on a router, and you need to know what each one of these do. Your ROM is your read-only memory. Uh, it means that whatever is written into ROM, if I repower the device, that information will stay there. It doesn't lose it. And typically this is where the POST and the uh, bootstrap system will live. Uh, or, or sorry, the bootstrap program will live. I'll talk a little bit about that in the next video. Uh, sorry, in the next slide. Um, and also ROM is where we recover most of our uh, major um, IOS-related incidents and also our password recovery procedures also run from the ROM mode. We then move on to the flash, and the flash is where we store our operating system, our iOS, our image of the operating system for this device. Um, PCs have hard drives where the um, operating system is installed. Uh, routers don't. They have a memory component known as flash. And ultimately, everything needs to get well, or work its way into memory, into RAM, into random access memory. Same as your PCs. Your PCs, although the operating system is installed, um, on your hard drive, etc., etc., it needs to get its way, find its way into memory. And all your applications and all your programs, they run in memory. And anything you do or change at that instant in time is happening in memory. And that's why, in a lot of instances, if you have problems on your computer or, they, or it locks up or it crashes, just by simply restarting your your computer, you actually free up all this, all the um, uh, block memory space or all the applications that have stolen some of your memory, uh, and you get to start from fresh. Uh, in other words, your PC will probably, in all instances, work again. And that's why whenever you call a help desk, the help desk normally says to you, hey, restart your computer, please. And you go, oh, they always tell me to restart my computer. What do they know? Well, in fact, what they know is, is that you more than likely to have a memory problem. And by restarting it, they give an opportunity to start your computer from scratch. And hopefully that problem would have gone away, or at least now they can start diagnosing, diagnosing that particular problem on an even playing field. And your routers are exactly the same. Everything needs to find its way from ROM, flash, into RAM. And in RAM is where all your com uh, your configuration will run from, um, your uh, routing protocols, your ARPs, your um, IP addresses, your uh, anything that it's, it's, it's stored previously, all your um, configuration files, um, everything basically will run in RAM. And obviously if I restart the router, it would lose everything. I'd have to um, <coughs> reload, decompress the, the iOS, and put that back into in, into RAM. Okay. So let's go through um, each one of these uh, individually now that we understand the basic uh, memory functions of your router. It is important that you do know this, guys, so you must uh, get your books out and do a bit of studying on this, um, the memory components and the boot-up process, because as I said before, they love asking you this in the exam, and it really is uh, a simple process to understand. So let's go through some of it now. Okay. Right, so as I said before, you turn on the power, the post will run, which is just a little diagnostic to make sure the hardware is okay. If the hardware is okay, we'll continue. If there's a major problem with the hardware, what is the point? Okay, so we'll do the post first. We'll then run through the bootstrap, and the bootstrap is not too dissimilar to the BIOS on your PC. You know when you first boot your PC, uh, you have an opportunity to push one of the function keys that will get you into your BIOS, and that BIOS really just tells your PC where the um, operating system is. Is it on the C drive, the D drive, wherever? And the bootstrap's almost the same. Okay, the bootstrap will tell um, the router where to find the image, where to find the operating system. Okay, if it finds the operating system, it will continue to load. If it doesn't find the operating system, well, it needs some form of recovery, some form of fallback. And if it doesn't find an operating system, it will go into ROM monitor mode, which is, we, we call it ROM1. And inside ROM1, as I said earlier, uh, this is a place where we can do all our password recovery, we can do our image recovery, etc., etc. If it does find an iOS, um, and I have not sent an interrupt key, why would I want to send an interrupt sequence? Well, an interrupt sequence is where I don't want the um, 
operating system to load because if the operating system loads it's also going to load a configuration file and typically that configuration file will have my passwords uh, and a number of, of course all my all my configuration parameters so if I'm locked out and I don't know my password there's no point the iOS loading that file because I can't get in anyway so we send an interrupt sequence to the router and say don't load anything else I want you to stop and I want you to go back to ROM1 because I want you to attempt my password recovery, recovery procedure Okay, so have a look at the password recovery procedure video, uh, and you'll see exactly how that's done on a router. Okay, but if the boot process was not interrupted and the iOS was all okay, we would then continue with the with the with the loading, and it'll say, okay, now the iOS is decompressed. We've put the iOS into RAM so for so long. We now need to find the configuration file. Do you have a configuration file? Uh, and and that, the only time that I shouldn't have a configuration file is when I first purchase this device. You know, if Cisco have just delivered it to me, I've taken it out of the box, I've got a nice shiny router on my desk. When I start it up, there will be no configuration. There is no password. There is no IP address. All the interfaces are shut down. I won't have a configuration file. And if I don't have a configuration file, it goes into the setup wizard. And you'll get to see this a lot on your routers, um, particularly on all your training courses, because you need to understand what this mode is. And all it really is is, like, is is almost like a menu system. We call it the setup dialog box. Some people call it the setup wiz wizard. Some will call it a startup wizard. And all it is is a series of questions that the router will ask you uh, for some parameters about the host name, the password, the IP addresses, and blah, blah, blah. It does go on a bit, so what most network engineers, they just ignore it, and they continue with the boot process. Okay, so if you do ignore it, you say, no, I don't want you to go in here, you'll just go straight into memory. You now have a blank configuration and you can start configuring your device. However, if you do already have a configuration file, it will ask you, well, well it won't ask you, or look for it. It will say, okay, uh, I can either have one on my server or I can have one on the device itself. And whatever parameter, I've, whatever parameter I have set, it will go and get it from either location. If I've said go get it from the TFTP server, it will look for the TFTP server. If it doesn't find the TFTP server or the file's not there, it will look back in RAM again. If there is one in RAM, then it will attempt to load it. So it will load either one, depending on which one it finds first, or which one I've told it to find. And all of that will mean it's now loaded the configuration file. That file has my password. That password is what I need to enter now when I log into the router before I get into RAM. And that's what's happening now. All... Um, the whole process, everything, starts from ROM and must end up in RAM for, this, for the device to be working. So any change I make from this moment in time, if I make an access control this change, if I were to change a password or if I were to change an IP address, as soon as I push enter on my, key, on my keyboard, that would happen immediately. So I would have the potential to lock myself out of my device. Okay, so it's important that when... Um, I make any change that I understand how to save those changes and where I'm saving them to. So all my running changes, all my running configuration modes, where I am now in RAM, I need to save them back into MVRAM. So remember that as well. Okay. Well, I'd like to thank you for your time and sincerely hope you choose a learning net as your IT training center of choice. Thank you.